Today I thought it would be fun to turn one of these PSI Faith Pins. I've not turned one before. Uh, I actually bought three of them and I have a bunch of olive wood blanks. And what better blank to go on a Faith Pin than an olive wood blank from Bethlehem, Israel. I've already cut the blank to size, drilled it, glued a tube in, and barrel trimmed it. So the blanks are ready to go. What I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to turn it, we're going to finish it, and then we'll go through the assembly process. I don't think I could have made a better choice for wood. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? I just love olive wood. It turns like a dream. It finishes beautifully. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous wood. Let me get my sandpaper out. We'll run through the grits and get this ready for finish. Well, it certainly sanded up nice. I'm going to go ahead and get my nonstick bushings on here. We'll get the blank cleaned with a little denatured alcohol and we'll start applying a CA finish. 
I'm just going to use a little denatured alcohol to clean the blanks. First, we'll kind of go with the grain, take anything out. Of course, this is a very tightly grained wood, but so there's not a lot of grain that's visible to us. I'm going to put five coats of thin CA on my blanks. Quick shot of activator to set it, and now I want to apply two coats of a medium CA. The blanks are completely dry, they look beautiful. What I want to do now is go ahead and get these non-stick bushings off, get my turning bushings back on, and then we're going to micro mesh our blanks. With this olive wood, we got such a beautiful finish. We're not going to have to spend a lot of time on the rougher pads. We'll go ahead and move quickly through the first two pads and uh, spend a little more time on the last four. Blank looks amazing. I don't see any blemishes in that blank at all. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let's uh, get it off the lathe and let's get it over to the assembly table and let's put this thing together. Since I've never assembled one of these pins before, I want to be really careful that I did it right. I laid all of my parts out just like they are in the instructions and I read through the assembly instructions. I'm really glad I did and when I get to a certain step, I'll show you what they suggested that I had no idea to do, but I think is really a fantastic idea. We're going to start off by assembling the nib. And we've got a really nice fit. When you assemble this part, let me get a little closer to the camera. There's threads on the top that the transmission screws into and this bottom piece is pressed into your bottom blank. Now here's the thing that I thought was really neat. It said take a piece of scrap and drill an 8mm hole in it. I had this piece that had a 10mm so I figured that'll work just as well. But put that over the threads and then when you press it in you're pressing on the outside of the ring and not on the threads which could damage them. I thought that was a great little tip. We'll grab our spring and we'll look at it. This looks like the smaller end here. I always like to put the smaller end on the refill. We'll drop our refill into the bottom of the pin and we'll take our transmission and get it attached. Smooth operation, that's always a plus. Now with the top half of the blank, we just need to press this little grommet into the back of the blank. 
Let me adjust my pin press. With that in the back of the blank, we can then put the threads for the cap through the clip and thread it onto the top half of the pin. And let's find out, let's see, I think there's not much showing there, so let's twist that on there. Now the tricky part, we're going to line our pin up. I'm a little concerned because I've got a, a gap there. I'm going to take a closer look at the instructions and see what might be the problem. I'm not really sure what to do about this because as I put this top piece together, there is actually a piece on top of the center ring that keeps it from fully engaging. There is no other part that would go around that. I can't believe that this pin would have that large of a gap between the top and bottom blank. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do. Let me take another look at the instructions and I may even jump onto Penn State's website and see if there's any comments about this because that's rather troublesome. I'll be back as soon as I find something out. I didn't find anything in the instructions but by looking at the pin I found that this must be threaded on. The center ring must be threaded on because if I back it up it tightens down and it leaves the gap down here, which I can take and press that back into the pin. Let me just set my pin press. I'm assuming that ring threads off. I guess it doesn't. That's a little better. I'm still not completely, not completely happy with that. I have got, that's the transmission un uncoupling right there. I should be able to get a nice tight fit. Let's just say I'm not overly impressed with this pen. Um, I'm going to shut the camera off and work with it a little bit and see if I can't... Uh... Also, I'd like to point out something. Look at, look at the deformation on the tip. See if I can... Can you see that, how it's kind of deformed? It's not plated real well. That's really upsetting because this pen was supposed to go to a, my wife's best friend. Her son just got ordained and she asked me to make this for him, but that is really, that is really shoddy work on the tip. And I'm just not happy with the way this pin goes together. I've got two more of these kits. I think what I'll do is take a look at one of the others and see if maybe I just got, just got a bad kit. Man, that's upsetting. I've been working with this pin a little more and I noticed something. Take a look at the band in the center as we turn it over. See that gap right there? The band is actually bent down like it's like it's crushed almost. If I look at it, I don't see any damage to the inside. I just honestly think this is a, a very poorly designed kit and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the other two I have are in a little better shape than this because I, I can't give this to someone. I can't sell this. I mean, this basically for me is a uh, waste of money. Um, and if the next one doesn't turn out well, I'm going to let you guys know. And uh, my suggestion would be stay away from the faith, hope, and love kit. I'll be back in touch and I'll let you know what I find out when I turn number two. I've turned another set of olive wood blanks. 
did them the same exact way that I did the first set with the plastics, five coats of thin, everything the same, and I've laid out another pin kit. Taking a look at this nib, and the nib looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get it assembled. Okay, got a really nice fit there. Let's get this back piece. Actually, we need to stretch our press out just a tiny bit. Let's get the back piece. And I've got a little block of wood here. Making sure everything is seated nice, just taking my time and going slow. This one's not loose, which tells me that that may have just been a defective part. Let me find the spring here and get it put onto the ink refill. Let's get the transmission attached. Okay, it functions perfect, nice and smooth. put back into the back of this is there any way to line that up let's see is that looks like about like that there we go. Pin functions nicely. I tell you what, I'm still I'm still unhappy with the way this fits. There is not a good fit here, and I know that my blank was perfectly square at the end. They make pins all the time, and to have one that's screwed up, maybe, but to have two that are screwed up, I don't think so. I think my blanks are pretty square. Um, I'm not at all happy with this kit. Not at all. I'm not even going to bother making the third one. I think it, it will be a waste of time because I think I'll run into the same. And look at that. I can see down at the tip there is a little discoloration there. Um, not happy at all with these. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop. This video did not start out as a product review, but unfortunately it ended as one. Um, these Faith, Hope, and Love kits from Penn State, not impressed with them at all. I will not be purchasing any more of these kits. Uh, they were a waste of money as far as I'm concerned. The tolerances on the kit are terrible. Uh, there are parts that have uh, defects in them, and I, I just don't intend to waste any more money or any more time on this particular kit. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. If you got any comments or questions about these, Leave them below and I'll be glad to answer them. Have a great day and I'll see you again real soon. Take care, everybody.